Toma News presents Alaska. You can actually see Russia from land here. Oh, you betcha, yeah. Yeah. Two moos found frozen in ice after battle to the death. Two men in Anulakleet, Alaska were going for a walk near the Bering Sea earlier this week when they stumbled upon the most epic of sights. Two moose, antlers locked, bodies frozen in ice. How did they end up like this? Well, upon closer inspection of their carcasses, one of the men has a hunch. Bull moose are known for their head-to-head -head bouts, squaring off for the right to mate with a particular female. When they clash, it can get downright nasty. Their pointed antlers cracking against each other until one either gives up or dies fighting. For these two titans, the match likely ended with one of them piercing the other's skull. Though he may have won the battle, the war itself was lost, as their antlers were so entangled, leaving the victor unable to dislodge and break free. The dead weight of his opponent, likely weighing in at a thousand plus pounds, may have dragged him down into the sea, a watery, icy grave for two. When the men discovered their remains, they later returned with the tools to cut them out, their heads to be sawed off, stuffed, and mounted on a wall. A pretty steep price to pay for getting some play. Pro skier Angel Collinson survives 1,000 foot tumble. Angel Collinson is known for dropping jaws for her success on the slopes, but her tumble down Neocola Range in Alaska last spring made our jaws hit the floor. Watch as she navigates through the powder, making it look easy. But something happens when she hits a patch of icy snow. Collinson begins a tumble that would take her 1,000 feet downhill. Miraculously, she was able to walk away from the spill with just a couple jammed fingers. Otherwise, she was completely unscathed. I'm okay. I'm okay. How? We have no idea. Collinson told ABC, I covered my face and protected my head with my arms. And I just kind of held on until I stopped. Yeah, I'm fine. And I can go back up and get my shit too. Woman mauled by grizzly bear gets up and walks to safety. Mama grizzly bears are known to be especially aggressive while caring for their cubs, and if one attacks you, it's pretty much up to the bear whether you're going to live or die, as a woman in Alaska found out last Sunday. A woman and her soldier husband were jogging around Joint Base Elmendorf Richardson but got separated. The woman was jogging around a bend when she happened upon a mother bear with two cubs. The eight-foot-tall bear responded as if the woman were a threat and attacked her. It clawed her arms, legs, neck, and body, then left her to die. Incredibly, the woman survived, then walked two miles uphill to find help. The Air Force advises its personnel to bring bear spray when they go jogging around the base. The grizzly bear will not be shot. Instead, the Alaska Department of Fish and Game recommends that people stay away from the area for a week, giving the bears time to leave. Luxury cruise ships set to sail through the melting Arctic. As global warming decreases ice cover in the Arctic, a Los Angeles-based cruise company sees opportunity rather than catastrophe. On August 16th, a luxury cruise ship will begin a 32-day journey through the Northwest Passage, a melting waterway that connects the Pacific to the Atlantic Ocean. Global warming has caused ice cover in the Arctic to significantly shrink over the last century. In light of this change, an increasing number of small cargo ships are now navigating the Northwest Passage. In 2013, 13 ships made the journey across the waterway. In the summer of 2015, 20 ships passed through. Though it's getting more traffic, the Northwest Passage is still a loosely defined passage, and navigators can choose from several routes to sail through. This summer, the Crystal Serenity will become the largest ship ever to make this somewhat uncharted journey. The Crystal Serenity measures 820 feet long, weighs nearly 69,000 tons, and has 13 decks. It is said to cross through the Northwest Passage in less than a month. 
The ship will carry some 1,000 passengers on board, each of whom paid anywhere between $22,000 and $121,000 for the trip. The cruise ship is set to set sail from Seward, Alaska and finish its journey in New York City. During the stretch through Canadian waters, a UK-operated research ship will travel with the Crystal Serenity. Equipped with two helicopters, the ship will also provide icebreaking assistance if necessary. The ship's operations team has assured that no waste will be dumped within 12 nautical miles of the shore. The ship will be set up with ice detecting radar, ice searchlights, and thermal imaging equipment to scope out ice in the ship's path during the day and night. Both the U.S. Coast Guard and the Canadian Coast Guard have expressed concern about the trip because of the inevitably slow emergency response times in the Arctic. The voyage has been described as a once-in-a-lifetime trip for guests who visit areas that have been largely off-limits to anyone other than scientists or members of the military. But with all its expenses, the amount of preparation that needs to go into it, and the potential risks it brings to the local environment, is this a trip that's really worth taking? Alaska's most active volcano looks poised to erupt. Experts warn that one of Alaska's most active volcanoes will be erupting soon. Warnings have been issued by the Alaska Volcano Observatory, an organization formed to study and monitor volcanic activity in the state. The Alaska Volcano Observatory has increased the alert level of Alaska's most active volcano, the Pavlov Volcano. The volcano erupted earlier this year, triggering a red alert, the highest of four levels. The latest Pavlov eruption in March sent an ash cloud as high as 37,000 feet into the atmosphere, covering villages and producing volcanic mud and lava flows. Eruptions of this degree cause issues for jet-powered airplanes. Volcanic ash clouds consist of small tephra, which are bits of pulverized rock and glass. These are only distinguishable from regular clouds via satellites in space. When these rocks and glass are sucked into an airplane's jet engines, they melt and coagulate, fusing the blades and other parts of the turbine, thereby causing engine failure. The eruption was the first for Pavlov since November 2014, and noted by the AVO as the most energetic since 1996. Pavlov is one of the most consistently active volcanoes in the Aleutian Arc. It has erupted six times since 1996 and 21 times in the past 50 years. Worker falls asleep inside cargo hold of Alaska Airlines flight. An Alaska Airlines flight made an emergency landing in Seattle Monday after an airport staff member fell asleep inside a plane and became trapped inside the cargo compartment. A ramp agent reportedly fell asleep inside the plane and ended up trapped inside Alaska Airlines Flight 448, which was bound for Los Angeles from Seattle. The plane was in the air for approximately 14 minutes. The pilot reportedly heard a banging sound from beneath, and the captain immediately turned the plane back to Seattle Airport and declared an emergency landing. The agent was trapped in a pressurized and temperature control compartment, but was taken to hospital as a precaution. Alaskan teen mauled by bear running down mountain. A 16-year-old running in an annual race near Anchorage, Alaska, suffered a gruesome death at the hands of a bear that he could not outrun. On June 18th, while participating in a local three-mile race, Patrick Cooper was making his way down the side of a mountain trail when he was spotted by an unfriendly foe. Around 12.30, having veered slightly off the path, Patrick soon realized someone was on his tail, but it wasn't a fellow runner. It was an angry bear. Panicked and alone, running as fast as he could, the boy quickly texted his mother to let her know he was in trouble. Black bears can run up to 30 miles per hour, and traveling downhill, poor Patrick didn't stand a chance. The teen's body was found a mile away from the trailhead, where he was pronounced dead. The search for the bear is ongoing. Patrick's untimely death is one of two fatal bear attacks reported in Alaska since Sunday. On June 19th, two contractors were ambushed by a bear at an exploration site in Fairbanks, one of whom was killed. A commercial jetliner flying from Tokyo to New York was diverted to Anchorage, Alaska early on Monday after a passenger went berserk and had to be tied to his seat by flight attendants. 
Nobuya Michael Ochinero was reportedly unruly from the moment he boarded all Nippon Airways Flight 10. Ochinero allegedly caused a ruckus, yelling and screaming, spitting on the floor, and even hitting the back of the seats of other passengers. Flight attendants tried in vain to calm him down before two passengers eventually helped subdue Ochinero and sat guard until the flight landed. An announcement was eventually made that the flight was being diverted to Alaska. Upon arrival at Anchorage International Airport, Ochinero was arrested by federal agents and police officers. After refueling, the plane continued its journey to the Big Apple, arriving just six hours later than scheduled. No crew members or passengers were injured in the incident. Turns out Alaska's permafrost isn't very permanent. Permafrost covers nearly a quarter of the northern hemisphere, and if that melts, life as a whole lot of folks know it will be put on ice. Alaskan permafrost, layers of soil that remain consistently frozen, is thawing, and scientists think this may lead to a further rise in global warming, regardless of attempts to curb it. According to the New York Times, researchers withdrew water and sediment samples from permafrost cores and installed temperature probes in the ground. Their aim is to better understand how permafrost interacts with the environment. In northern Alaska, permafrost 65 feet deep is said to have warmed from minus 8 to minus 3 degrees Celsius over the past decades. Globally, permafrost is believed to hold approximately double the amount of carbon currently in the atmosphere. When it defrosts, the carbon is sent back into the atmosphere. Scientists believe this could warm the planets over the coming centuries. A drunken passenger of a flight heading from New York to Shanghai allegedly caused the plane to divert to Anchorage, Alaska after she became out of control. Stephanie Heisman Albach is said to have had five glasses of wine in the first 90 minutes of the flight. She then stole drinks from the gallery while attendants weren't looking, climbed the seats and yelled profanities. The captain asked her to sit down, but she refused. You better tell the captain we've got to land as soon as we can. This woman has to be gotten to a hospital. A hospital? What is it? It's a big building with patients, but that's not important right now. That's when he decided to divert the plane from its destination, Shanghai, to nearby Anchorage, Alaska. She is being held at the Highland Mountain Correctional Center for Women.